time to talk about the Sejong the Great class of the South Korean Navy, one of the largest and most heavily armed destroyers in the world. It is also known as the KDX-3 class. It is a beautiful ship, representing a balance of power, prestige and elegance, and the pride of the South Korean Navy. South Korea has embarked on a substantial shipbuilding program known as the Korean Destroyer Experimental, or KDX. It is a three-phased program consisting of three individual classes of ships. The KDX-1, the Guangato the Great class, at 3,900 tons and commissioned in 1998. The KDX-2, the Yi class, at 6,500 tons and introduced in 2003, and the KDX-3, the Sejong the Great class, commissioned in 2008. Each phase gets more ambitious with respect to ship size, sensors, and weapons. As of December 2023, the South Korean Navy has inducted three ships of the KDX-1, six ships of the KDX-2, and is planning to have a total of six vessels for the Sejong the Great. The United States has sold a substantial amount of materials and technical support for the Korean Destroyer Experimental Program. The base hull of the Sejong the Great is based on the US Navy's Arle Brook class, but it was lengthened and enlarged by about 10% from the Arle Brook in order to install the Korean Vertical Launching System, the KVLS, composing of 48 missile cells. While the majority of the Sejong the Great VLS are designed to deploy the standard American weapons, the KVLS allows the indigenous Korean cruise missiles and the Red Shark anti-submarine missiles. The vessel's combat power is based on the Aegis Combat System, Baseline 7, Phase 1, developed by the American defense firm Lockheed Martin. The Sejong the Great made South Korea the fifth country to have the Aegis Integrated Combat System, after the United States, Japan, Spain, and Norway. As a result, the platform has increased the degree of interoperability between the South Korean Navy and the U.S. Navy. Aegis is first and foremost an air defense warfare platform. The Sejong the Great is primarily an air defense warship, with a secondary focus on anti-surface warfare, particularly by providing a land attack capability against North Korean targets. While the initial three vessels have a small degree of anti-ballistic missile functions, the following three vessels of the class will have substantially better anti-ballistic missile defenses. In the early 2000s, the Hyundai Heavy Industries shipyard was given the job of designing the new destroyer, chiefly by modifying the basic Arle Brook model to better reflect South Korean requirements. In August 2004, the South Korean Navy confirmed that the job of actually building the lead vessel will also be given to Hyundai. Construction began shortly afterwards. Because the Arle Brook is a mature design, and much of the important components are already being supplied by the United States, the process of building the ship was a breeze. American company General Electric supplied their tried and tested LM2500 gas turbines that power the ship's two shafts. These engines are well integrated with the design and the distinct four smokestacks of the Arle Brook. However, the wider flared hull and bulkier superstructure are distinct differences from the Brook. The Sejong the Great was launched on the 25th of May 2007 in a ceremony at the Osan shipyard of the Hyundai Heavy Industries in the southeastern port of Osan. Construction of the second ship, the Yugok Yi I, was assigned to the Dawu shipbuilding. It was laid down in December 2007 and launched in November 2008. A third ship was again built by the Hyundai Heavy Industries by March 2011. The first three ships in the class are collectively known as Batch 1 of the KDX-3. The following three vessels will be even larger and more capable and will be the Batch 2 of the class. 
The first vessel belonging to Batch 2 has already been launched by the Hyundai Heavy Industries, which appears to have emerged as the preferred builder. The Sejon the Great displaces around 11,000 tons at full load, even greater than the 9,700 tons of the Ale Burk Flight 2A. Length is 166 meters with a beam of 21.4 meters, again substantially more than the 155 meters and 20 meters of the Ale Burk. Complement is 300 personnel, including the air crew for the helicopter, and this is similar to the Burke. Propulsion is delivered by four of the General Electric LM2500 gas turbines driving two shafts, each with a five-bladed propeller with around 100,000 horsepower or 75 megawatts. Again, this is similar to the Ale Burke. Top speed is somewhere north of 30 knots, which is pretty typical for a modern destroyer. Operational range is 10,000 kilometers, give or take. Endurance is 30 days. The Sejong the Great has the hangar and the helipad for two medium-sized naval helicopters, generally for the anti-submarine role. Reportedly, however, the aviation facility of the ship is only suitable for operating helicopters up to Sea State 5, which is roughly equivalent to a rough wave. Any higher, and it is not believed that the helicopter usage would be safe and would not be recommended. This is a controversial issue, because the future battlefield situation is such that performance in bad weather conditions could make a crucial difference. The KDX-3 is primarily an air defense warship, with secondary functions in anti-surface and anti-submarine warfare. The main weapon for engaging targets is its missiles. Did you know that the Sejon the Great has two different types of vertical launching systems? They are the standard American-designed Mark 41 VLS and the larger Korean KVLS. They each do remarkably different things. The class has a grand total of 128 missile cells. These include a Mark 41 system of 48 cells located in the front, and another Mark 41 system of 32 cells in the aft, right before the helipad, for a grand total of 80 Mark 41 VLS cells. The Mark 41 VLS is armed with the standard missile 2, or the SM-2, medium-range surface-to-air missile, the standard air defense weapon available to most Western-aligned warships. They have a range of 170 kilometers. The Block 3B of the SM-2 has infrared guidance, added on top of the original semi-active radar homing, adding another layer of insurance against electronic interference. The three ships of Batch 2 of the Sejong the Great class will have additional weapons to be carried inside the Mark 41 VLS. These are newer American weapons. I will talk about these later when we move on to the Batch 2 ships. Aegis, the ship's integrated combat system, links the onboard computers to the AN Spy 1D airspanned multi function phased array radar. It will detect hostile targets as soon as possible. Effective range is determined by factors such as the radar horizon, the altitude of the target, and its radar cross-section, and so on and so forth. Once a target, for example a missile, is identified, the onboard computers will deploy the SN2 or other weapons to engage the threat. The AN-SPG-62 fire control radar provides terminal guidance and target illumination for the SN-2 missiles during interception. Let's move on to the Korean KVLS. The Sejon the Great has a KVLS of 48 cells located to the aft, right behind the smokestacks. They are larger than the Mark 41 system. They enable the use of the domestic anti-submarine missile, the Red Shark, also known as the K-ASROC, meaning the Korean anti-submarine rocket. 
Typically, around one third of the KVLS will be dedicated to carrying the Red Shark, amounting to around 16 anti-submarine missiles in a typical loadout. The rest of the KVLS, meaning 32 cells, will carry the land attack cruise missiles. These are weapons with exceptional ranges at well over 1,000 kilometers. They are supposed to engage key targets inside North Korea during an emergency, for example, North Korean airfields, ammunition dumps, and missile launches. In addition, the Sage on the Great has deck mounted canisters carrying 16 anti ship missiles. However, these are only light weapons with fairly short ranges, partly because the ship is not really designed to attack other ships. Let's talk a bit about the second batch of the KDX-3, composing of three ships. The background to this is the increasing capability of North Korean ballistic missiles, starting around the 2010s. This has led the South Korean Navy to add dedicated anti-ballistic missile defenses to the final three ships of the Sejong the Great class. In May 2016, the Navy announced the KDX-3 Batch 2, will be equipped with a VLS system capable of firing all standard missiles, including the SM-3 and the SM-6. The SM-3 interceptor is used by the US Navy to intercept short and intermediate range ballistic missiles as part of the Aegis ballistic missile defense system. The SM-3 has also been employed in an anti-satellite capacity against satellites in low orbit. In August 2016, press reports and subsequent confirmation by Lockheed Martin revealed that South Korea will be fielding the SM-3 on the last three ships of the Sejong the Great. They will also be upgraded to the more advanced Baseline 9 version of the Aegis combat system which has the modern computing architecture to perform anti-ballistic missile defenses more reliably, compared to the older Aegis Baseline 7 on the Batch 1 ships. In addition, the Baseline 9 can simultaneously perform anti-ballistic missile defenses and air defense at the same time, something the older Baseline 7 cannot do. I want to talk a bit about the SM-6, the elder missile to be carried by Batch 2 of the King Sejong. The SM-6 is the main extended range air defense weapon of the US Navy, mainly for engaging hostile aircraft at a standoff range. It can also be used as an anti-ship missile in a pinch. In April 2022, South Korea announced it will purchase an unspecified number of SM-6 for the Batch 2 destroyers. The new weapon has a maximum range of 460 kilometers, nearly three times as much as the SM-2 currently fielded on the first three ships. According to South Korean media, the SM-6 Block 1B is suitable for intercepting Chinese hypersonic missiles. Basically, the final three ships of the Sage on the Great class will have the full range of air warfare weapons available to the very best of the American destroyers. To accommodate the changes, the hull will be lengthened by 10 meters to 170 meters from the original design, and displacement is increased by around 400 tons. One of the biggest complaints about the Sejong the Great proliferating in the South Korean media is the high operating cost, at least compared to the preceding destroyer classes. Reportedly, the operating cost of one KDX-3 warship is so huge that it's cost just as much as the total operating cost of the preceding Yi Sansen class. This point around expenses seems to be a difficult problem for the South Korean Navy in the future. The reason for this crazy expenditure is not so much a problem of the ship's performance, but rather the high maintenance and management cost of the Aegis combat system, 
the cost of importing foreign weapons for the ship, like the SM2 SAMs and other factors. With the upcoming introduction of the SM3 and the SM6 into the ship's arsenal, the expenditure associated with importing expensive weapons is only set to increase. That will be a challenge for the South Korean Navy to deal with, in the context of a country that has to carefully balance the funding between the Army and the Navy. The Sejong the Great is among the most advanced warships afloat. They are designed as multi-role destroyers, although the balance is weighted towards anti-air warfare, with a secondary land attack function. They are defensive ships first and foremost, and the emphasis will only be increased with the second batch, tasked with defending against ballistic missiles coming from the north. For a long time to come, the behemoth that is King Sejong the Great will remain the prized capital ship of the South Korean Navy. For an overview of the key classes of naval vessels in the South Korean Navy, please watch this video right here. That will be all. See you next time.